The battle against the climate crisis can sometimes feel hopeless. Our oceans are rising, our ice caps are melting, and our forests are burning. We can all feel the winds of change blowing, and not in the right direction. But what if I told you there was hope down there beneath the waves? There lives our mightiest ally in the fight against climate change, tending vast floating rainforests that are a vital support system for all of life on Earth. They are climate giants. They are whales. They need us and we need them. It's time to step up, to protect our whales, to protect our oceans, to protect our planet. One of the most exciting scientific findings of the past half century has been the discovery of widespread trophic cascades. A trophic cascade is an ecological process which starts at the top of the food chain and tumbles all the way down to the bottom. We all know that whales eat fish and krill, and some people, certain politicians in Japan, for instance, have argued that killing whales is good for human beings, as it boosts the food available for us to eat. And so you would think. But as the great whales declined, so did the numbers of fish and krill. It, it seems counterintuitive. Surely their numbers would rise as their major predators disappeared. But it now turns out that whales not only eat these animals, they also keep them alive. In fact, they help to sustain the entire living system of the ocean. Whales feed at depth in waters that are often pitch dark, and then they return to the surface to the photic zone, where there's enough light for photosynthesis to happen. There they release what biologists call fecal plumes, vast outpourings of poo, poonamis. These plumes are rich in iron and nitrogen, nutrients which are often very scarce in the surface waters. And these nutrients fertilize the plant plankton that lives in the only place where plants can survive, the photic zone. Fertilizing the surface waters isn't the only thing the whales do. By plunging up and down through the water column, they also keep kicking the plankton back up into the photic zone, giving it more time to reproduce before it sinks into the abyss. Even today, though whale populations have been greatly reduced, the vertical mixing of water caused by movements of animals up and down through the column of the oceans is astonishingly roughly the same as the amount of mixing caused by all the world's wind and waves and tides. More plant plankton means more animal plankton on which the larger creatures then feed. In other words, more whales means more fish and krill. 
But the story doesn't end here because plant plankton not only feeds the animals of the sea, it also absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When eventually it sinks to the ocean floor, it takes this carbon out of circulation down to a place where it remains for thousands of years. The more whales there are, the more plankton there is. The more plankton there is, the more carbon is drawn out of the air. When whales were at their historical populations, before great numbers of them were killed, it seems that they might have been responsible for removing tens of millions of tons of carbon from the atmosphere every year. Whales change the climate. The return of the great whales, if they're allowed to recover, could be seen as a benign form of geoengineering. It could undo some of the damage we've done, both to the living systems of the sea and to the atmosphere. Mr. President, whales face more threats today than ever before. By ship strikes, pollution, entanglement, loss of habitat, and whaling. Commercial whaling was banned in 1986, but Japan, Norway, and Iceland have continued their brutal slaughter. As a candidate, you promised to end illegal whaling, and we applauded your leadership. But recent reports reveal your administration supports an international proposal which gives Japan, Iceland, and Norway a license to kill whales. Please, Mr. President, honor your promise. Do not support this International Whaling Commission proposal. Together, we can end whaling and save the whales. It was actually my birthday on Friday when we found the whale. So it was the best birthday present ever. It's sad, but also incredible. The first kind of 10 seconds, she got like a bit nervous, you know, there's like bubbles everywhere, but then, I don't know, call me crazy, but I think she knew we were there to help her and she just relaxed and we started working from like the front of her mouth backwards. We kept on cutting and she kind of gave a little wiggle to get herself out of it. And when she was free, it was, she just stayed there. She relaxed, she caught her, you know, like her breath, she got some strengths. She gave us like a little thank you song, like very, like very briefly. And we just got to be with her 
as she got more strength and then she just swam off and it was out of this world. It was incredible. Kathleen from Michigan, and this is my whale call. If you smoke, please keep your cigarette butts off our beaches. Every year, cigarette butts consistently rank number one on the list of trash in our ocean. Cigarette filters are made from cellulose acetate, a type of plastic that takes from 18 months to forever to decompose. Apart from creating problems for the environment, Fish, birds, and other animals can mistake them for food and choke or starve to death because of the plastic that fills their stomachs but isn't really digested. Dispose of your cigarette butts responsibly. are poisoning our environment. And that is what I learned this summer. I knew that smoking is bad for your health, but I didn't know just how toxic and damaging cigarette butts are to the world we live in. Each year, 135 million pounds of cigarette butts are discarded in the U.S. alone. That's almost half a pound per person. We've become so used to cigarette butts, we don't even notice them anymore. These butts are being tossed from cars, flicked into streets, and dropped almost everywhere. Year after year, cigarette butts are the number one item picked up during beach and roadway cleanups. The California Department of Transportation spends more than $40 million every year cleaning up litter, and cigarette butts make up one third of the total waste collected. And that means taxpayers are spending millions of dollars each year to clean up this mess. When cigarette butts get left on the road, they get washed into storm drains. They flow through them and end up in our lakes, rivers, and oceans, and are washed up on our beaches. Along the way, they can be mistaken for food by fish or other animals. So, there are a lot of butts that pollute our environment, and that's bad for a lot of reasons. First of all, cigarette filters are not biodegradable. Most people think that cigarette filters are made of cotton, but they're not. I learned that from my friend Evan here from the California Coastal Commission. Cigarette filters are actually made of a plastic material called cellulose acetate. Like all plastics, it's resistant to biodegradation and can persist in the environment for generations. And actually, it gets worse. Not only are cigarette filters non-biodegradable, but by design, they capture some really nasty toxic chemicals. Dr. Tom Novotny from San Diego State University told me was actually in these yucky butts. Studies have shown that butts release the same toxic and cancer-causing chemicals found in cigarettes, such as nicotine, ethyl phenol, and arsenic. In our tests, we were shocked to discover that only one cigarette butt soaked in a liter of water for 48 hours produced enough toxic chemicals to kill most of the fish in that water. So these little butts have the ability to severely damage our aquatic ecosystems. And that's not cool. Not only does our aquatic life suffer, but small children could mistakenly eat cigarette butts which are full of these poisonous chemicals. So you have millions and millions of these little, toxic, chemical-filled capsules lying around everywhere that don't biodegrade. And they're leaching poisons into our environment. Oh, and let's not forget, each year there are forest fires caused by discarded cigarettes, which destroy wildlife, our beautiful trees, and people's homes. So what did I learn this summer? Although I knew cigarettes were bad for us, what I learned is that they're damaging to the environment as well. Each year, hundreds and millions of butts end up all around us, and we don't even notice. There are so many cigarette butts that I've found them nearly everywhere. I learned that cigarette filters are made from plastic and don't biodegrade. They're full of poisonous, toxic chemicals, and they're damaging the world we live in. We need to fight for the health of our environment. If grown-ups were only aware of this damage, I bet they think differently about cigarettes and smoking. 
Summer vacation can't last forever, but damage to our environment does. If you care about the world we live in, please join me in the fight against tobacco. Thank you.